Hey YouTube, Audio Olympian here, back with another video coming to you from the Coliseum. Today's video, we're gonna be talking about two preamps today. Prima Luna Premium Prolog Preamplifier and the Ship Freya. So we're gonna get into the differences and the similarities coming up in a minute. If you're one of our subscribers, welcome back. But if this is your first time visiting our channel, we wanna welcome you, thanks for stopping by. And if you could help grow our channel with us, all you'd have to do is open the disc tray of that like button, take your favorite CD out, slide it in there, and press play on that like button there. We'd appreciate the support. Originally, I had the integrated version, integrated amplifier of this version and model here uh, a few years back uh, until I upgraded to my Carver, my Bob Carver 275. And I like that one much better, so I sold the integrated amplifier version of this model. And I was still very curious on how a preamp, a tube preamp would sound in my setup, in the system here. And reading a lot of information, watching videos, a lot of people talked about how if you're gonna put tubes in your system somewhere, it might be most beneficial to put it in the preamplifier section, and you could still use your solid state amplifiers with that. The two preamp is going to make it more neutral and soften the sound and give you a different dynamic than if you just have a regular solid state preamplifier. So I recently, or uh, maybe within the last few months, purchased the Ship Freya for my two preamplifier. That is an amazing preamplifier. I really like it, I like the sound of it, and it did change the whole dynamic of my sound. But it's still considered an entry level, maybe mid-range level. Um, both of these models are out of production now, which is why I purchased them. Mostly because there are newer versions of these. You got an upgraded version. I think the this might be equivalent to the Prima Luna Evo 100 preamplifier right now. And then there is the obvious um, Shit Freya Plus. The reason I purchased these was because in doing some research and reading, the upgrades were not very different compared to the price that you're gonna put into it. So, you you know, if you buy a used uh, item here on the used market, you can always get it for a significant discount most of the time compared to uh, what its original retail price was when they first were distributed. And a lot of times, depending on where you purchase and, and what site you use it from, most of the people are gonna be very honest uh, with their gear. Not too many audiophiles or even cinephiles are very harsh with their equipment or push it really, really hard and to the extreme, you know, a lot for many, many hours. So a lot of items you can get very, very significantly discounted on the used market and they still have plenty of life left to them for you to enjoy. I like both of the preamplifiers, so I'm not trying to find out which one is better. Again, different price points, different designs. Uh, but I'm going to be moving the Shit Freya up into my bedroom system there. And I'm going to keep the Prima Luna down here in my main audio room. So some of the similarities here, they both have a brushed aluminum look to the front of it. Whereas the Shit Freya, the whole casing is brushed aluminum. The Prima Luna just has the faceplate right here, but it does have a little bit more brush look to it. So it is a little bit different here. Uh, I like that look, the, the stainless steel brush look. Looks really cool, it's modern, and it's pretty durable. It doesn't get very, very um, printed up with finger marks and it can clean off very easily too. They both have potentiometers here for volume and the selector. Now for the Ship Freya, it only has one. It's the volume and you use the remote control for the selector. Where over here on the Prima Luna, this has a second selector there for um, selecting which input that you're gonna use. Now, one of the differences in the tubes, um, we could go all day long in the differences of the tubes here as well. Again, remember different models, different designs, uh, but we're just looking at well, our main goal is to find out how do they sound with each other or compared to each other. You got six tubes over here versus the four tubes. And 
<clears throat> two of these tubes up here on the Primalona are rectifiers, which helps keep the noise floor really, really quiet, keeps it very, very low. Now the tubes that I use for the ship frayer are not the original tubes that came along with it. I, um, when I bought it, again I bought it used, so the package that I bought it, or when I, when I purchased it, the guy threw in the extra tubes that he was previously using with that. So it does give it a different sound. I do have the original tubes that came with it, but I do prefer using those ones there. It does give it a little bit more fuller body, robust sound to it. So I like that there. Not sure if you really need to tube roll for the Prima Luna. Prima Luna already uses top of the line tubes for, for their stock tubes here. Um, so you can, I guess if you maybe want to get a little bit of a different sound, but you necessarily wouldn't need to change anything on the tubes here for the preamplifier. Now talking about the inputs and outputs here really quick. On the Prima Luna here, you have one, two, three, four inputs, and you have a home theater pass-through with two outputs. And then over here on the Freya, you have one, two, three, four, five inputs and three outputs. And this is probably my, my most favorite thing I like about this, is it has the XLR input and output. And to me, that does make a difference. Uh, I feel, or at least I notice here in my room, that I do get a better signal, the noise floor is quieter because you have a more stable connection here. To my knowledge, Prima Luna doesn't have XLR input on any of their products. And I'm curious on why not, and why not that many preamplifiers do. And usually for um, ones that do have the XLR input and output, those are somewhere in the ballpark of a $2,500 to $3,000 and above preamplifiers, two preamplifier. Whereas I believe when the Freya came out, it was $699 for the original, so $700. And you got a lot of inputs plus the XLR in and out, which is kind of unheard of in products at that price range, which I really like that. And then I believe the Prima Luna, when this one came out here, was $2199, so $2200. It's got two mono stages in there for the sound output and then the point-to-point uh, -point wiring. And you could go on and on for days on all the uh, intricacies and details of the design and build of this model here. So I'm really excited about it. So that's just a little bit on the input and output sections. Another difference between the two preamps here is obviously the size and weight. 37 pounds for the Prima Luna, and I believe the Freya is maybe 10 pounds, somewhere around there, 10 to 12 pounds. Uh, it's nice to have a good, nice, heavy duty piece of equipment. That gives you, it just gives you the feeling that it is well built and well designed. At the same time, it's also nice to have a light piece of equipment that can move around very easily and you're not gonna have to uh, break a sweat if you're gonna transfer it to a different part of your house. Uh, so. I like that again, I like having the, the two different um, dimensions, designs for both of these preamps here. So in closing here, can a $700 tube preamplifier hold its own against a $2,200 tube preamplifier? Short answer to that is yes and no. In some things it, it was it did hold its own and other things, the Prima Luna far surpassed it. The Freya was more bassier, it had more punch to it, which I like that as a bass head. But the Prima Luna was way more neutral and realistic sounding. And with that, it added a little bit more dynamic, not in a sense of sound or explosion sound, you know, sound that's kind of in your face, 
but when an instrument or a uh, backup singer's sound or voice came in, it really kind of took you by surprise, like, wow, that was there, I didn't notice that before. Whereas the Freya didn't have that kind of dynamic to it. It has a dynamic in a different sense. Again, I really do like the XLR in and outputs of the Freya. I wish Prima Luna would put that into their products because I'd really be interested in how hearing how the difference of sound um, would transfer from those uh, types of inputs and outputs. But I'm pretty sure there's a reason they don't do it. I'd like to find out why. So if I do make it to any of the trade shows this year, um, that's one of my questions I'm definitely going to ask them. So that's my take here on both of these. Again, this wasn't to try to find out which one was better. Different design, different price point. But just to find out what is the real differences on uh, entry level versus mid level type of product line. And I did find them. So I'm really glad I have both of these. Uh, I think the fray is gonna sound really good when I move it up in my room. It's a little bit smaller dimensions. I got a bit of a higher ceiling up there and I'm gonna use that with my two model block um, Emotiva XPA 1Ls, which are, you can run those at a 60 watt class A amplifier. So I'm gonna use those up there with my Wharfdale Evo speakers. And um, I'm gonna keep the Prima Luna down here in my main audio listening room here. So thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. We wanna say hey and what's up to all the new subscribers. Thank you guys, we appreciate the support. We're fastly approaching our thousand subscriber giveaway here so make sure you're subscribed to the channel here so you'll get notified about that and um, we just can't thank you guys enough for supporting our channel so when that happens here we're gonna have probably like a first second and third place type of winning we're not gonna do something really crazy where you have to enter over and over and over for the giveaway here and share and invite all kinds of friends and people to the channel that's not really what we're about here. We just want to show some appreciation and love to all you guys out there for supporting us and watching us over the past four years. And I say us, really it's just me. I'm a solo guy here. I do everything on my own. So, um, but that's coming up here really soon, probably near the end of the month. So sometime next month in June, we will have that giveaway. So pay attention, look out for the details coming soon. Thanks for watching.